Man Up, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. And now, it's time to Man Up. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. I am Joe Stopulos, and today I'm going to be joined by my good friend, Mr. Joe Teeling. He's the founder of the radio station here, and he's also a, uh, a man who is passionate about health and fitness and helping people to live healthier lives. And so I'm excited to have him on today as we continue this series on, on all things health and fitness in the spiritual life. Let's start in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter season, everyone. Uh, as you heard last week, uh, if you listened, I talked about we are now in the octave of Easter. The Catholic Church mandates that you have fun. We are mandating celebration for eight days. So I do, I mean, I talked about this previously, this idea that if you lived in California and your weather was 75 and sunny every day and you were an atheist and you didn't have any things to look forward to and you had no highs or lows or any of that stuff, you would be so bored at the monotony of life. The Catholic Church, if you embrace it, forces you into these seasons of penance and fasting and then forces you to have fun. So the season of Easter here is... 40, we have a long season of Easter, right? It is a is a very long season. Well, this is the octave. We are in the middle of the octave of Easter. The octave of Easter is if you so if you follow the the liturgy of the hours, every day's readings are the readings for Sunday. So we are so every so if you're a feast day throughout the year and you're in the liturgy of the hours, it is a day of feasting. And so when that happens is you read Sunday's reading because Sunday is the day of the resurrection. It's the day that we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Okay. If you do the Liturgy of the Hours every single day this week for eight days is Sunday. We are supposed to treat every single day this week like a Sunday. As I mentioned, my kids' school is out this week. They do not. They did not have school last week for a Holy Week, but then they also get this whole week off, and we do not do school this week. We celebrate. And so every day we're setting aside time to do something as a family, something fun, and there's there is holiness in that. Again, the church— does not want us to fast every day of the year forever and ever and ever. They want they set aside these days to recognize the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that took place yesterday on Easter Sunday, but we celebrate it really hard for these eight days. And so as I'm talking today with Joe Teeling about health and fitness and all these things and how to live a healthy life, we're going to have to kind of like put a little bit of a conversation around the fact that this is a time where we're supposed to be having fun and celebrating. So I haven't had a donut since the beginning of the year, I'm going to have a donut this week, okay? So this is not this is not really good for the whole health and fitness conversation, but it gets into the idea of celebrating. And I think that's really important. I do not want you to, to lose sight of that, that we really want to take time. Take your kids out for ice cream this week. Find things for them to do. Uh, do whatever it is that you can do to set aside, I'm going to have a delicious alcoholic drink probably every night this week because I've been taking the last 40 days off or the last 90 days off. So all that said, a happy Easter to everyone, uh, and have a, a blessed octave of the of Easter, and really celebrate these these eight days until next Sunday uh, in the Lord's resurrection. We're going to head to a short break, and when we return, we'll have on Mr. Joe Teeling. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Fast Signs is a custom sign and visual solutions company with an extensive selection of digital signage, interior and exterior signs, banners, and vehicle wraps. Learn more at FastSigns.com. Thank you, Fast Signs in Clive, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Ashworth Vision Clinic. Complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and urgent eye issues. 515-440-4610. AshworthVision.com. Support for programming is provided by Construction Professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry. Sarah is an apostolate dedicated to the support of new and existing vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A.org. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Law Offices of Amanda T. Adams. Catholic-owned and operated, Amanda offers a variety of family legal services, including adoption and guardianship. Learn more at amandatadamsjdlaw.com. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Excited today to have on a good friend of mine and a very important guest here at Iowa Catholic Radio, the founder of Iowa Catholic Radio, currently the chief mission officer, the president of the foundation. The list goes on and on. Mr. Joe Teeling. Good morning, Joe. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you. We are in the middle of a series. It's kind of getting broken up by Holy Week, but it's still nonetheless a, a series that I'm on on fitness and health and all things around that. Because I do believe there's this this, this cord- you know, this. It's all intertwined. We've got our life, our physical life, our spiritual life, all intertwined. And our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, as I talked about last time, and I know you and I can get into. And so we're doing this series on health, fitness, and all those things, and how it relates to the spiritual life. And I thought you would be a great person to have on, because this is something you take seriously. And I mentioned in my interview with Lance Farrell, or no, this might have been before that. This might have been in my one on uh, on the slight edge, where basically I have a vision in my head. What is what is this vision in my head? It's me at age 68, and I can still run, and I can climb mountains and stuff. And you're basically what I want to be, Joe. <laughs> well, at least we have the same name. Hey, we have the same name, and I, I want to be you someday. That's okay. what I want. Well, I am inspired, so I'll tell you, Kristen and I were out hiking. It was a fairly difficult hike. It was up into the mountains a few miles, and there were these 80-year-olds there. I'm like, that's what I want. I want to be able to go with my wife, be 80 years old, climb up three miles up a mountain, and then climb back down. Like, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So all that to say, you know, I think as I'm setting the stage for this, you've obviously taken it seriously your entire life. And I think it's a, it's a great thing for me to be able to, uh, you know, reflect on what, how did you get where you're at? But before I do that, I want to set the stage a little bit. Um, so you and I talked ahead of the show, and I, as I was praying about this, you know, I think today it's very difficult to live a moral life, right? So you think about all the stuff that we have when it comes to just the the amount of, infiltration that the, the devil has in society today through, through pornography, through whatever, drugs, all the things. I think it's a, a, there's a parallel with living a healthy life. Our jobs are very sedentary, right? So you just think 100 years ago, we had to physically move, right? We had to move. We had to farm. You had to do the things. Our cities, we didn't have cars. And so you have to walk places, right? You walk. If you live in the sixth floor of a building, you walk down six floors, you walk to your job, you came back, you walked up six floors, and you got a lot of caloric expenditure just from your daily life. And the food we had was, it was actual food, right? So the sugar industry hadn't taken over. We had actual food. So all those things kind of worked together to help people live healthy lives. And today that's just gone. And so I, I think we have all these things working against us. And God doesn't want that. Right? He wants us to live a healthy life. So I'll turn it over to you. Cause I know you've got some thoughts on, on all of this and how it pertains to the spiritual life as well. So I'm going to turn it over to you, let you kind of start it off, and then ask you some very pointed questions about health and fitness in your life, Joe. Okay, well, thanks for inviting me. I'm uh, eager to get into this topic. And I know in, um, uh, you mentioned with your interview with Lance, uh, he talked about our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it's a good reminder to our listeners, if you really think about that, obviously the Holy Spirit is God. And if our body is supposed to house God, we should take care of it. We want it to look good. I mean, if you take a look at um, the temple that was built for God in Jerusalem, um, and how exact that was and how beautiful that was and how pristine that was and how well taken care of that was. That's a great way, I think, to relate our, our mind to our body is that God created our body and he creates all things good. And so it only stands to reason, keeping this simple, is we ought to try to take care of our body like we try to take care of our mind and our spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, hopefully the point of this of this series will be to give people some ideas on how to do that. Yeah, and sure. So I look at this and I go back to my kind of, you know, I look at there's kind of two categories. There's this idea that we have everything's against us, right? We have sedentary lifestyles, jobs don't require us to move. We, we literally don't, we don't have to move. You can have Amazon deliver everything to your door. Oh, I know. It. Your job, you can work <laughs> from home. You can work from home and have Amazon deliver everything to your door and never leave your couch. I mean, I didn't, you couldn't do this 100 years ago. 100 years ago, you would just die. And today we, we have this, uh, you know, this ability. Praise be to God that we, we can, we are, we live in a time where we have these wonderful technologies. That just means for us, we ha- we have to manufacture some way to be healthy. Okay? Sure. We have to go out of our way more. And to me, I had this idea of two categories in mind just to really simplify it. You've got 
activity on one hand and nutrition on the other. So basically calories in, nutrition, calories out, activity. And within the – there's kind of subsets with the nutrition piece and we'll get into that. But I want to help people understand you know, what – I don't think people are taught. I don't think people know what it even – what is healthy anymore. I mean I think we've lost track of that because the food we eat I, – I told Lance this. Like a great kind of barometer is – if, would your great 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 grandparents recognize the food you're eating? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, in most cases, probably, probably unless you're eating a steak right. or a, you know, a piece of chicken. Or <laughs> yeah, they, that's right. That they they re- recognize the meat and maybe the potatoes. Yeah, right? some fruit and stuff. Yeah. So. so you know, um, Joe. You know, as you mentioned, my age already at 68 years oh, old. Oh, I didn't. I thought you were 67. I was. Just, well, no, I I'm, said 68. I am 68. Happy birthday, whenever it happens. Yeah, that yeah. was December 12th. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Regardless. Um, I think that uh, part of the challenge in in your body health is very similar to your spiritual health. Sometimes when you get into um, bad habits of sin, sometimes people feel like they're never going to break that. They're never going to be able to have salvation or God can never forgive mm-hmm. them. And I think it's that same way physically when people get into a rut physically. They, maybe they get a little bit overweight or maybe they haven't been active for a while. And it's not part of their life. It's almost like I can't ever get back to mm-hmm. being in good health. There's nothing I can do. The mountain's too tall. Yeah. And I've experienced that myself a little bit, but I've experienced that mostly in just relationships and friends and family that it's like, man, you know, what do I do? And so, you know, If you're going to climb a mountain, right, you have to take that first step, and then it's another step. But it's simple. You just start to climb. And I I think it's the same way when you think about the body and a healthy body. You got to make it simple. And and so that's kind of what the advice I give to people or when I've done some coaching. I I, I, I want to pause you there real quick. Yeah. One of the reasons I really wanted you on is I know you have a passion for this, of helping people. I do, yeah. Yes. And so this is, this is not just Joe talking in theory. Joe's done this in practice. Yeah, and so I always, where I am today I, is like, I would say to you, Joe, what do you like to do as it relates to movement? Mm-hmm. And you answer that question. So it might be, really the only thing I like to do is golf. Okay, now that's a really good start because you can walk when you golf. You can swing a club when you golf. You can get in and out of a cart even for that matter. And so I always like to start with that. It's like if you can tell me what you like to do, then we can fashion something around that because then I know you'll do it. Mm -hmm. If you try to do what I do, you're not going to do it. (laughs) Mostly, right? Because it's not easy or it's not fun or it's not what I like to do. So, you know, for all of our listeners out there, I always start with that, and it could be golf, it could be I like to walk, or I like, I like to fish, as an example, or I, I like to ride a bike. And, and so when we can find that out, then your chances of beginning to integrate what I would say a disciplined movement in your, in your life is going to be much, much greater chance of success versus me laying out a program to you. I want you to become a black belt in karate, or I want you to you know, become an ultra marathon, or... or or whatever. That's not necessary. Mm-hmm. But what is necessary is movement. Now, if I'm playing golf and I'm in a cart and I'm drinking beer all day, are, are you going to talk me off of that, Joe? I certainly am. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. You know, what I would say to you is let's do this. How many beers do you drink on a round typically, Joe? And you're going to say seven. And I'm going to say, all right, let's change that to two. All right. Drink one in the front nine, one in the back. And let's do this. Let's walk one nine and let's ride a cart in the second. Okay, so we're going to break it in easy for you. You still get to drink your beer and you still get to golf in a cart, but let's just walk the first nine holes. Yeah. Okay. so that's that's a beginning. And if and of course, then there's a problem in the winter because it's harder to golf in the winter in Iowa. But you got to start somewhere and you got to start where you have the best chance Mm -hmm. of success. It's interesting. I had a friend of mine I met with coffee a couple of weeks ago. And he said that he lost something like 50 pounds. It wasn't that big of a guy. Just walking. That's right. Now, he was up to 20,000 steps a day, but it was just walking. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't running marathons. He wasn't eating kale five times a day. Uh, he was just walking. Yeah. And same, that's, yeah, I have a very close friend that I worked with for about tw- over 20 years. And when he turned 65, still was working. He made a commitment to walk 20 minutes a day starting January 1st. He lives in the Twin Cities. Yeah. Never missed a day, even in bad and clement weather. All he did was walk 20 minutes a day. 
and by the summertime, he lost 37 pounds. So 37 pounds just so, by walking so 20 again, minutes a day. If, if you were to ask me, Joe, what's the, what is my starting point? I would say get a book on tape or get a, uh, a podcast you like yeah. and just walk 20 to 30 minutes a day vigorously if you can, the fast, you know, whatever you can do. If you do that every single day, period, from a fitness standpoint, for the rest of your life, you will be, you will be in a very good spot. You're better than 90% of people, okay? Very simple. Um, I think well, let's talk. We can talk activity above that in a second. I do want to go to on the nutritional side of this mm-hmm. because a, a story that comes to mind for me is you said that you had a friend that lost all his weight from just walking. I know somebody who I, I, I saw as a buddy of mine from college, his brother in law, and he was very large, like almost 400, 350, 400 pounds. Next time I saw him a year later, he was half the man, he was mm-hmm. low 200. I go, What did you do differently? He said, I stopped drinking Mountain Dew. Yeah. I started eating salads instead of hamburgers. I go, so two chains. I go, I go hold on. I go, How much Mountain Dew are you drinking? There's anywhere between six and 12 a day, which is an extreme amount. It I is. Got that. But the point of this is he made, he, he didn't even up walking. He just changed from his Mountain Dews to no Mountain Dews. And he changed from eating hamburgers and stuff every day to salads. Sure. Okay. So there's a nutritional part to this. And yes, I would sir. say if you're drinking copious amounts, if you're drinking any amount of sugar pop, you should probably just try to find a way slowly to wean this thing out because I, I, I just, the more I study sugar, the more I read into this stuff. It's like, man. Yeah. I, I agree. Sugar is difficult and, and nutrition is a whole nother topic that's vitally important. But um, instead of being a nutritionist, and I'm not, though I must admit I've read tons of books on nutrition over my lifetime, I try to keep that simple too, Joe. And that is um, eat whole foods. Mm-hmm. That's, Would you define that? Sure. He's not talking about going to Whole Foods, the, no. uh, the whole, store. <laughs> whole food would be, in my mind, it's, it's not processed. So as an example, if you're eating green beans, that would be a whole food. Yeah. If you're eating an apple, that would be a whole food. If you're eating a steak, that's a whole food. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, now, I, I don't want to get into the details of you know how the animal's raised and so on and so forth, but... Um, instead of making this real complicated and overwhelming, it's like, what do you like to do for movement? Let's design something around that. And what do you like to do to eat? And let's get rid of the things that are packaged. That's enough to start. You know, there's a guy I, uh, I had an early on in the show, this Dr. Mike Abouassili, and he has his six rules for life, essentially, on how to, and he says, if you're going to a supermarket, high V or something, just go to the outsides. Mm-hmm. Stay, go straight to the left, and stay to the back. Curl back, never go to the middle. You know, you know keep it. <laughs> Pretty good advice, not bad, right? Not yeah, bad. Not Again, bad. His other one he has is called the water rule. He says if you can pour water on it and it stays the same. It's probably good to eat. I mean, again, these are very simple things. But again, there's some level of yeah. there's probably fiber in this thing. Yeah. If it if it holding up underwater a, in, in many cases. It's a really good point. So like, I really like quick fried to a crackly crunch Cheetos. That, I'll like eat a, like one bag a, um, a month. Yeah. I mean, like a little. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. And if you poured water on that, yeah. it wouldn't stay the same. See, right? That see made me think of that. It's like, ah, oh, that orange stuff would be see, all over the place. See you later. Yeah, great stuff. Um, so a simple is real important in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the types of words that people probably are, don't like to hear, discipline and habit. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, that's everything. Integrate the walk, you know, six days a week as a habit. And once you do that for a month or so, Man, now you're now you've got something going. So let me let me tell you about this. So books on tape. I started getting the books on tape about four years ago. When I get into a good one, I'm in the middle of one right now. I can't stop. I am looking. <laughs> so there was I was listening to uh, I did the Truman biography by McCullough like two years ago, and all of a sudden Kristen looks outside and I am on the roof cleaning the windows of our house and the outside windows because I just need time to listen to this book. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Les Mis right now and I cannot stop. And it's a sixty hour book. Wow. My point on that is, if you need a good excuse to walk get a good book a good long audio book that's gonna count of monte cristo that'll do it you'll want to sure. you will want to leave your house every find something there's 60 hours if you listen to it one x count of monte yeah. cristo is probably 57 hours that's a lot of walking and <laughs> and you'll you'll be itching to get out because you want to have a good book and you'll want to listen to it and so these kinds of things would help incentivize the habit of doing these things incentivize yourself with something like that. You bet. One of the things I've done um, on my bike rides uh, or when I'm in the garden, uh, you know, I pray a lot of rosaries. Mm-hmm. And that's a, another, I think, yeah. edifying Very thing good. to do. 
um, and uh, you're in no hurry, yep. and you can take your time and, and be you know devout and and very mindful and meditating on those mysteries while you're riding a bike. Or walking through the streets. Oh, My well. father-in-law was the same way. He would he would pray the rosary. I, I know a priest in Davenport who's, you know, this guy's from Africa, and he's on fire, and he sings hymns <laughs> while running out loud. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I it. love it. So, I mean, there are ways, and I've prayed rosaries while running before, too, and I think there's lots of, again, all of these things to say. I think you, you said it perfectly. Simple is better. And this is, goes back to my show from a few weeks ago with, with the slight edge. You have to find something that you can take that first step and take the second step and make it repeatable. You bet. Where I, where I go on the – so that's on the activity side for sure. But on the nutrition side too, I like how you said keep it simple. Whole foods is – is if you're looking on the ingredients list and the ingredients is one ingredient, that's probably a good way to go. If we're getting into seed oils and we're getting down that road and sourcing, it's going to be – we're going to get complicating it here. And that's – you can do that down the road. But understanding like sugar, bad, fiber, good, right? Yeah. Like protein, good. Yeah. Um, you know, I I try not to get um, as deeply into the clean part and mm-hmm. the oil part and everything else. I know I know what's good and bad for me because I spend time studying that. But practically speaking for people, you can't feel guilty about, if you like soda, having a can a week, right? Yeah, yeah. Or like you drinking beer in the golf course. Okay, let's yep. just cut it down. Yep. Yep. And that is progress. Yeah. And so I like Cheetos, and they're not any good for you, but I'll, I, I'll eat Cheetos once in a while, and I don't care about that. Or, yeah. you know, and, and so to me, it's the, you, you do the balance. It's like um, how much whole foods you're eating versus what you used to eat. If, right? if, you, can do, if you can do it, 80% of your diet is super clean. Perfect. Perfect. And then make it 90% later. Make it, and you could, you that's can right. Up that's it. right. But starting somewhere, I think, is really important. And I, I heard a great podcast on this where the guy said, I am all for dessert. For dessert. <laughs> not dessert for breakfast. Right. Not dessert for lunch. Dessert for dessert sparingly. That's like, right. You, sh- and every, you should. You shouldn't live your entire life without a bowl of ice cream, right? You're, there's a guy named Jocko Willink who's a big Navy SEAL guy. He goes, I love mint chocolate chip milkshakes. Once a month. Perfect. You know, yeah. great. Yeah. That's good. That's a good thing. Um, all right. So two months left on this side. I would like to keep you around because I do want to get deeper into uh, you specifically. But anything else on this side of the break as we're talking kind of holistically about nutrition and fitness do you want yeah, to get into? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I was in the health insurance and insurance business for 41 years and did a lot of wellness programs for group health plans. And I got really into the blue zones, mm-hmm. um, which you may know about. A lot of people may not. This was studies of cultures where people lived well into their hundreds, many, many, many of them, healthy, good life, you know, good life. At 110 years old, they still have their mental clarity, their body still works well, and they die peacefully. And um, I, I learned some really interesting things from the study of Blue Zones. And so there were four main characteristics of these cultures, and they were in Okinawa, Costa Rica, a suburb of Los Angeles. Um, And then Sardinia. And the four main things were, one, those cultures had belief in something more powerful than themselves. So they all believed in God in some way. Their focus on the family was insanely more powerful than the cultures around them. And the third thing was movement. And we can get into that maybe a little bit after the break. And lastly, they knew where their food came from. But their diets were wildly different. So I thought that could kind of cue that up for where we go next yeah sure so let's do that let's head to a short break i hold you around for the third uh the third segment here we'll kind of wrap up the conversation with mr joe teeling stick around we'll be right back support for iowa catholic radio is provided by the sarah vocations ministry sarah is an apostolate dedicated to the support of new and existing vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life learn more at join sarah.org join s-e-r-r-a.org Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the law offices of Amanda T. Adams. Catholic owned and operated, Amanda can help with business formation, contracts, commercial transactions, and other business legal matters. Learn more at Amanda T. Adams, JDLaw.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from First Heartland Financial Group consultant Scott Prickett, an independent financial firm offering personalized financial advice with your insurance and investments for all stages of life. 515-202-6218 or online at firstheartlandfinancialgroup.com. Welcome back to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, continuing the conversation with Mr. Joe Teeling. We are on Blue Zones. I want to talk about a little bit of Blue Zones, and I also want to talk about Joe Teeling. Where do you want to start? Well, let's finish the Blue Zones. <laughs> so just what I found so fascinating is the folks in Costa Rica, in this little central part of the country, they ate a lot of pork. They raised their own pigs. And, you know, these guys were living to 110 years old. And if you went over to Sardinia, they raised sheep and, and they, they made their own wine. So they were drinking wine every day and they were eating lamb chops and they were living to 110 years old. And then you go to Loma Linda, California, where a little group of Seventh-day Adventists were living. About half of them ate meat. The other half were vegetarian, but they were all living to 110 years old. Didn't matter. And then the last was Okinawa and they ate a lot of fish and they had their own little gardens. It was fascinating, though, Joe, because it was all Whole Foods. And they knew where their food came from. Pretty fascinating. Yeah. Their movement, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. Yeah. Probably don't have time for that. But I thought, it, it, again, simple. Believe in God, foster family, move, and know where your food comes from. Well, hopefully our listeners in this, on this show have the, the first one, the belief part done, right? So hopefully you get one of four already started. Well, and family. And right. family, and hopefully you're working on that too. So you bet. We're, we're working on the last two, Joe. So. Let's talk about Joe Teeling here again. Okay. You, you're the person I want to be 30 yeah. years from now, whatever it is. What have you done throughout your life to maintain some level of fitness and what you're doing today? Well, sure. You know, I was very blessed as a young, very young man. I started running. I like a competitive athlete and I was good at track. I was fast and I was a tiny little guy. And so in seventh grade, they allowed the sixth graders to go off of the seventh grade track team. And I made that team. And uh, by the time I was a freshman in high school, I was 4'10 and I weighed 82 pounds. Ridiculous. And so I went out. I went out for football, and the football coach, after four days, said, "Hey, probably not, Joey. We have another sport. Yeah. We just started here called cross country. You might be more suited it's for that. For you." And I, uh, I ran varsity that freshman year. But our coach was terrific, Coach Dick Whites, and he was so advanced in training techniques back then. This was in the seventies. So I became a disciplined runner, mm-hmm. and I ended up becoming a you know, a, a distance runner, yeah. but I, I learned all about nutrition. I learned all about weightlifting. I learned all about high intensity training. And I, of course, trained twice a day for yeah. all those years in high school. Then I ran in college competitively and I ran for two years out of college. And so I look back on that and all the things I learned there, I've applied to my, my life. Not you're not, just, you're not still running. I quit long, running. Long di- distance. No, I quit running distance at 55 and, and, yeah. and I, uh, now I, I work out six days a week. I ride a bike one day a week for uh, endurance. I sprint two days a week, and then I'm in the weight room or in the basement in my doing body work three days a week. Beautiful. What's the sprint work real, real quick? Is it 200s, 400s? Yeah, I'll either do like four 400s or, you know, four 200s or 10 hundred meters with 15-second rest. So I think that's beautiful. And I talked about this. It was kind of what Lance and I were talking about, is that while lifting is really good by itself. It is. And, and running is really good by itself. When you're doing this combination of all these things, stretching, run, like so cardio, stretching, and, and muscle building, that's really the ticket. That's kind of the secret sauce. If you can do all of those things, again, I think what you talked about last time is really important because you talked about stair-stepping it, doing what you like. But eventually, if you can get to the point where you can do all of these things mm-hmm. intertwined, that's the secret sauce. It is. And I used to sprint between my golf shots, but my wife kind of made me quit doing that after about 30 years. So I could play golf and still get my sprint workouts in. I said, my dad, my dad refuses to use a cart. So he's 72. He walks. He plays a lot of golf, but he walks eight, all 18 holes. He now uses a push cart at least. Um, but again, there's, there's ways to kind of stair step this thing. All right, 30 seconds left. Anything else to add, Mr. Teeling, to this wonderful conversation on trying to help people to live this, this healthy life? I have a, a little saying that many of you have heard. It's comfort is the enemy of the good. Mm. And I don't ever want to get too comfortable there's time for rest and recovery, mm-hmm. but, you know, doing high-intensity workouts, it ain't, comfortable. it ain't comfortable. People ask me all the time about my running. I go, I hate running. <laughs> I hate it, but I do it because I know I have to. Yeah. So, Joe Teeling, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for joining me on Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis. It's time to Man Up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness. 